and Jim. Welcome to Watch One and thanks for logging on. Today I'm going to talk about my favorite complications and features in luxury watches. Now there are so many complications in this modern era with everything from computer assisted modeling to computer assisted design. We've seen the arrival of complications that were completely unforeseen in the era of traditional horology. But I think you don't have to go too extreme, too esoteric, or too expensive to get good value in useful and, let's face it, fun complications. So I want to count down from fifth to first my top five favorite luxury watch complications. So coming in at number five, this was a feature of the first Cheshire Le Coult I ever bought, and frankly, as a frequent traveler, it's come in handy more than I ever imagined, and it is world time. The traditional Louis Cotier system, with the counterclockwise rotating 24-hour chapter ring, allowing me to see the time in all 24 of the world's principal time zones. Yes, I know at this point we're probably over 40 total, but for the most part, having one major reference city per time zone makes it easy for me to keep track of where all my friends, family, and business connections are and avoid the 4 a.m. wake-up call. Now, world time is useful, but frankly, I can get something even a little bit more useful than that in the form of a countdown timer. Now, a countdown timer for me is significantly more advantageous and useful than a chronograph because it allows me to instantly read and at a glance how close I am to an event after a predetermined elapsed time. Let's say I'm cooking something. Let's say I have a set amount of break time between meetings. The countdown timer, especially a programmable one, allows me to do this with ease. Now, it's not the easiest thing to accomplish in mechanical horology, which is why you don't see it too often. Countdown timers are fairly common, but programmable? Mm, that's that's rarefied air. Let's talk about the Rolex Yachtmaster 2, where you can program an interval between 1 and 10 minutes for countdown with a large arrow index indicator. For me, that's just about perfect because it gives me the flexibility to set my countdown and then keep an eye on it without too much else to clutter the display. But also worth noting, Panerai's Regatta Timer, the PAM 526, allows you to count down as well over five programmable minutes. You determine how many between zero and five the count will encompass. And ultimately, no one does it better than Breitling with their super quartz movements. The compatibility of the aerospace complications, all of them really, with daily life is so one-to-one -one perfect that I'll never understand why this watch isn't more popular. I gotta say, unfortunately, it's a little bit of quartz snobbery that we've got in the community, but I'm working to stamp that out. But the aerospace gives you a phenomenal countdown timer that terminates with an alarm. And if you don't need a programmable countdown timer and your budget is fairly substantial, the La Suta Originals Pano Retrograph Countdown Flyback Chronograph Alarm might be the best bet if you want to seriously entertain yourself with a seriously useful complication. However, it's not something I would use on a daily basis. A triple calendar? I absolutely would. There isn't a day that goes by when I'm wearing a watch like my Duomet here, which has no date, that I don't wish I had a date window. What's better than a date window? Well, a triple date. Day, date, and month. For me, that's the perfect complication because every single day of the year, I'm going to reference it for correspondence, for emails I'm writing, for checks I'm signing. There's so many times in this era of the smartphone when we still glance to our wrist to try to grasp the time in an instant, and a triple calendar does that. Plus, as your budget permits, it allows you to elaborate and go up the tech tree. You can get a triple calendar, which you have to reset five times a year, or you can go with an annual calendar. If the budget permits, you can even shoot the moon and go for a full perpetual. So within the world of the triple calendar, you've got a lot of flexibility to find the one that's right for you, for your budget, for your taste, and for your wrist. Now, as useful as the triple calendar is, I have to admit that the dual time probably takes the cake for my second overall pick among the most useful complications because as a traveler who also has friends and colleagues who travel, sometimes the world time is overkill and I want to have a specific time read to me from my dial available at a glance. 
It might be anything from the time foreign markets open to the time I have a window to call my friends in far-flung locales, but a dual time is much more focused than a world time, and in general, because the dial's less crowded, it's also easier to read. So very useful, the dual time, and with most dual time watches, if you're not using the dual time functionality, you can configure the second time zone, if it has an AM PM, to act as an AM PM for your local time. And some world time, or I should say dual time watches, also give you the ability to superimpose local hour hand over the reference hour hand and clean up the dial tremendously. So in many instances, the complication can even disappear when you don't want it. And through considerable experience with all complications, high-end and low-end, I've come to the conclusion that the alarm is second to none. There is no complication that you will use more often or rely upon more heavily than the alarm. I've used my alarms for traveling at times when I had the option to bring my world time watch or a dual time watch, I've left them at home and I've brought my Memovox calibers from Jezure Le Coult because when you're getting ready for a red-eye flight that takes off at 4 a.m. When you are trying to wake up in what would normally be the middle of your night for a European trade show in Geneva, as an East Coast U.S. resident, having that alarm to shake me out of bed is invaluable. When I have to make a number of meetings during the day at something like SIHH, I know that I'll be resetting my alarm several times a day, and after I hear the alarm, I go to my meeting, I set it to my next alarm, and it gives me an alert between obligations in a way that no other watch really could. Having the watch that has an active reminder built into it, whether you're using it for diving in the case of something like a JLC tribute to Polaris, or you're using it for office requirements, as I often do at trade shows and around the company, or you're just using it to wake yourself up at a time when the body's not going to do it unaided. The alarm is the ultimate complication. And being quite reasonably priced with many options available on the market. There's everything from the Ulysse Norden Sonata with minute repeater quality chiming right down to downright dirt cheap Chinese calibers that have that capability. So the alarm, the king of complications, you heard it from me. I may be biased, but the Memovox takes the cake. And those are my top five luxury watch complications.